Hello again and welcome to the channel. Today I've still got that cold that I had yesterday. If you're a regular viewer you'll know I'm vlogging every day in October um, just as a bit of an experiment really uh, in a very simplistic way other than what my films used to be where they were a bit more complicated. Um, I've not got my Bald Explorer cup and I'd just like to say a big thank you to all those lovely people who did go and buy one of my Bald Explorer cups. Actually, they're on the other side of the room. Um, but it was very kind of you and I hope that they arrive and that they're good quality. I don't actually have anything to do with the company that makes it. I just uh, uploaded the artwork, um, but uh, I, they are nice and people do buy them and um, most people have been very happy. I can't think that I've ever had a complaint, so that's really good. Um, but I've got a cup of coffee and as I say, I still got this wretched cold, which is a bit of a shame. Anyway, I hope you're doing well. We've had um, a bit of rain and a bit of sunshine here in Worthing over the last 24 hours. And of course darkness because it was uh, night time as well, which obviously goes without saying. Thank you. The title of this um, uh, video is about electroplating the dead. Have you ever thought about electroplating the dead? Now that's not, um, what do they call it, where uh, you, you, know, you entice people in, uh, clickbait. It's not clickbait. Um, I was looking at this book here, which is called Victorian Inventions, that I bought some while ago. Um, when I was interested in writing and various bits and pieces. And of course I pulled it out of the old um, shelf to see if there was any ideas for some of my unusual stories which are on my other channel, which I hope you're enjoying by the way. I was thinking actually I could put them on this channel. I don't know whether that's the right thing to do. I know there's lots of different things on this channel and mostly all this is about England and Englishness and, and what have you, and I'm an Englishman and um, and as I said yesterday, some people might watch what I do because apparently I've got a reasonable English voice and people might learn from a native English speaker. I don't know if that's something I'm going to pursue, but uh, who knows? It's all part of England and Englishness and, and things made in England and all of that. Now, it's interesting because I like uh, the idea of inventions. In fact, my dad was an inventor. He invented some very strange things. And I do remember being a child and a gentleman coming to the door and my dad bringing him into the front room and he opened up this massive great big suitcase. And in this massive great big suitcase was, a, was thousands of these silver, what looked like clips they had a sort of envelope bit one end and a little piece that went across and a, and a curvy bit. And I'd never seen these before. I was quite young. I must have been about, I don't know, six or seven, something like that. And he had this, this little curvy thing. There were hundreds of these things. I had no idea what they were. Well, it turns out they were actually bookmarks. And he had come up with these, uh, uh, these um, well, they were stainless steel plated or something like that, I don't know, or, or completely stainless steel. They were very clever. And so what they would do is they would clip. Now, I don't know if you can get anything like this now. They would clip on a book, say about here, with this other arm that came out that I just described round here. Um, no, hang on. They would clip at the back of the book and the arm would clip here. So what you would do is as you turn the page, the arm, which is fixed to the, the hard back of the book, would just keep the page. So as you read, you would, you'd only have to close the book like this and with the clip in. Anyway, it was an invention of him, his, that he'd made. I think he tried to sell it. No good. Nobody wanted it. And so he sold the concept and the idea to somebody for, a, you know, quite a bit of money. And all the ones that he'd made up, which were, as I say, in this rather large suitcase. And the bloke uh, was very happy, handed over some money and, and took the patent away with him. And, and that was it. And I think that was one of the earliest times I realised that my dad was a bit of an inventor. He set up a business making aerials, but not aerials for television. No, none of that sort of stuff. He made aerials for like the marine industry and he had these what he called DF loops. And I think DF was for direction finding. Um, they were great big loops like this, but, but uh, you know, about this tall off the ground. 
and they were looped here and looped there. Now, I always thought that they looked like the thing that Joe 90, do you remember the Jerry Anderson programme? He used to sit inside and this thing would spin round like, like a giant egg whisk when he was being um, prepared for a mission. Anyway, these, these were made out of glass fibre, these things, and my dad would make them in his little, off, in his little workshop. And away he went, and occasionally he would go up. He also did these other aerials, which were used in... Um, if you were in an aeroplane, and, and the aeroplane had to ditch into the sea, inside the um, inflatable life jacket was the, an aerial. You would, you would pull something, I can't remember what, which started the aerial uh, sending out a signal, a distress signal, which was only a bleep back in those days. We're talking about in the 19, well, I suppose the uh, early 70s. And uh, yes, it would send out a bleep. And he would manufacture these things. And I remember looking at these aerials that my dad made and they were sort of basically bits of wire all joined together. They were sort of coils, straight bits and, and other bits. They were uh, dipoles and I don't know, UHF, VHF. I never really understood any of it. And he had these um, oscilloscopes with, with the, you know, like the sort of thing you see in the uh, hospitals, but old fashioned green circular screen that you'd see out of a sort of science fiction B movie, really, going up and down like this. Not the beep, 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 beep thing that you see in the hospital films and all of that. But it was a sort of much older version of that. And he would be testing the relative um, radio frequency. And, and by just tuning these aerials a little bit, he would get he would get the perfect match, as he would call it. Anyway, so he, he did that and he wanted me to go into the same business as him. But I had no interest in aerials. Um, uh, now, I enjoyed the fact that he had invented other things. He invented, another thing he invented was an aerial, but he put it in a lamp, in a table lamp. Now, this is back in the day when televisions, you know, if you were in a flat, say, in London, and there was no main aerial, it was just the sort of terrestrial television that you would have, and there was no main aerial, and you'd have a little portable black and white telly, I mean, we're talking those sort of days, and you had this, what, what was known as a Yagi aerial, which is the ones that have the, the straight bits like television aerials, but much smaller, and you'd be forever doing this. I don't know if you remember those days when you're forever sort of trying to find the si signal. Where is the signal? There, oh, hold it there, hold it there, love. Yeah, and you're tuning in on the UHF dial. Things wrong with you, but it's YouTube, BBC, radio, and all of that. Trying to get a television picture, um, and you want the horizontal hold to steady itself, and all of that. Well, he came up with this very cunning, clever idea for an aerial that he could put inside a television lamp. So the television lamp could go on the window sill, or on top of the telly, or anywhere really, as long as you had a long enough coax cable and it would be disguised because he thought that the television, the Yagi aerials were quite ugly. So he came up with this very unique design and it was very clever, but he only manufactured one type of lamp. So it was this lamp or nothing uh, and this shade on the lamp or nothing. So, and, and you could see that there was huge potential, but my dad was an inventor, not a marketeer, and he didn't like spending money. And I know what it's like. I mean, he had his failings, he had his geniusness, and then he had his failings, which meant that he never really got to the sort of levels that I think that he ought to have got, which is a real shame. And I know that I've got my failings, which is also holding me back from the things that I ought to be doing. And I realise that. And it's sometimes it's very difficult to know what the failings are, or, or you know what the failings are, but you don't know how to rectify it. So that's, that's quite tricky. My dad didn't realise that he was advertising this product. He said, oh, I don't believe in advertising. Advertising doesn't work. He'd made this product. He'd made, again, it, I don't know how many prototypes of them he had, or the first batch to sell, about 50 in boxes, all nicely labelled, all very well presented. And he put them in, he advertised once in the TV Times, he told me. And he said, I've got no inquiries whatsoever. Advertising doesn't work. And years later, I was making my videos for the corporate industry and I was working for radio stations. 
and I was interviewing the people who were selling their adverts or putting their adverts on radio. So it wasn't the entertainment part of the radio, it was the, you know, the annoying adverts. But the one thing that they would always say is it's the drip, drip feed, the continual feed, which is why big brands still advertise. You know their name, you know that cola drink, you know it by name. It's almost as if they don't need to advertise, but they still do because they're reinforcing the name of their brand. And I understand now the importance of that, the continual banging away with this is who I am, this is what I do, this is our product. But poor old dad, who, who again, he was an inventor, he understood inventions, he understood radio signals and frequencies and all of that, but he didn't know marketing. And so these things never sold, which was a shame. There was a number of other things that he just kept coming up with these silly little ideas. And I love that. And I very much equate my dad with the sort of nonsense that you see in books like this, in these um, very odd and wacky inventions. And I, I imagine inventions are still going on. People are inventing things, but without the marketing, they, how do you get on? So electroplating the dead, yes. Who would think that you would want to electroplate the dead? But it says here, Dr. Varlot, a surgeon in a major hospital in Paris, so a Frenchman, has developed a method of covering the body of a deceased person with a layer of metal in order to preserve it for eternity. So embalming, really, in metal, which is a, a balmy kind of idea, if you ask me. The body is first made electric to, electrically conductive by atomizing nitrate silver onto it. And, it. and it goes on to describe it. And uh, I think there's a picture there of it. It's, um, I don't want to do too many close-ups on, on, this, on this particular book because they're probably all copyrighted and what have you. But I love the idea. The Victorians, for me, were at the, the real core of invention, weren't they? They just sort of went to extremes and, and they were sort of mucking about with the concepts of submarines and flying machines and hot air balloons um, and, and all of this. And, and uh, it is quite bizarre using steam and early electricity for um, various things. I was talking about uh, seances the other day and, and of course electricity and luminosity and things like that in the dark and, and those, those funny little balls, you know those balls with the lights that go like that when you put your hands on them, all conducting various parts of electricity. Um, steam ships and um, and there was an invention here I saw about projecting advertising onto clouds, which I thought was a fantastic idea. But if you're paying for a month of advertising and you've got clear blue sky, probably isn't going to work. Um, and also, I, I, so it's just a giant projector, really. But as clouds move and deform all the time, you can imagine the text and the message would somewhat deform. However... If you think that kind of idea was utilised in the uh, in the when was it the sixties comics? I don't know if it was Marvel or the other uh, the other lot that did Batman and the original Batman in the nineteen sixties movies. They used to sort of project the image of a bat onto a cloud into the sky so that Batman would be alerted. So it's quite it is quite amazing. All these old um, these inventions which were quite extreme but what I like about the Victorians is because we hadn't gone into that digital world it's all analog and a lot of it is human powered as well human powered there was a one of a guy in a shower and in order to pump the water is in the shower on a bicycle and they're using that bicycle principle of the chain and the wheel and gearing systems in order to pump the water above so, you know, he's working up a sweat, but he's being washed at the same time, which I think is a, a sort of bit of an irony, really. Uh, motor cars, early motor cars. And there were, I understand, back in the early days, electric cars, um, uh, which I understand it was, was a thing. Although quite how far you could go in an electric car and the sort of batteries you would, would require or the unit to generate the electricity, probably from some steam... Um, organization would be quite good. Um, so yeah, hang on, I need to blow my hoot out. 
Excuse me. It's um, that cold is still here, which is not very handy. In fact, there's the picture. I don't know if you can see that, but there is the picture of the man on the shower cycling along. And I love that. Another book that I've got on inventions, which I was, again, I bought some time ago because I, I was just curious about what was going on, is, is one, this is edit, edited, it says here, by Mark Tanner. Um, and it's called Great British Invention. So it's a lot of made in England stuff. Um, so it's got some weird things. Um, I'm just looking here, a cereal bowl. I don't know what's so special about the cereal bowl. This cereal bowl, the invention relates to a cereal bowl and more especially it relates to a cereal bowl for, eat, for eating cereal. Well, you just think, well, hang on a minute. Head support for a coffin. Uh, is another invention in this book. And it's just some wacky old things. But these are, um, these are, if I remember rightly, these are all records from the patent office. So people have actually submitted these and said um, it could be quite useful. Wristband information. Well, we do that, don't we? In, you put, when you go to events or you go to hospital, there's a wristband and now you can scan them. So some of these early things from, these are like from the 90s. Um, which is uh, quite bizarre. Different types of mirrors and shower units, wearable apparatus, uh, a foot washing aid. My dad invented another thing my dad invented, actually, whilst I think about it. Um, he was very good at these things. As he got older, he realised he couldn't do as much as he used to do. And he invented an, uh, a thing for picking up leaves in the garden because he couldn't bend down. He could sweep the leaves from the trees, you know, in autumn, this time of year, into the garden, uh, into a pile. He could do that all right, but it was the bending down to pick the leaves up, which he found very difficult, and he thought a lot of people would have the same problem. So I remember he, he, he effectively designed what was a giant pair of scissors, really, that, that sort of scissor action, this sort of motion. Um, and he had these paddles on the end that as he went like this, I mean, they were very much like the clippers. So it wasn't terribly unique, but I guess there was nothing around at the time. And he thought, well, this would be good. And he, he made them up and he had them made up and he made the, got the people to make all the bits. So it would cost him an absolute fortune to make them. So they had these metal stainless steel paddles, which were, I th well, actually, I think they were aluminium. I can't remember now because I did see them. And then there's tubes of steel, which he had painted green um, on this sort of scissor effect. So you stand here like this and you do something like this or, or something like that, I imagine. And the paddles at the other end basically squish the leaves between the two and then you can lift them up and put them into the wheelbarrow. And I think that was pretty much the idea. Very clever, very simple. And of course, it's those simple things that was uh, the thing. And I, again, my dad didn't want to go in with another company. He'd gone to all this trouble. He didn't trust people, I don't think. I think that was the thing. And, and my experience of working in television with people who take advantage of your ideas, my ideas being television ideas, that's where my inventive and, and writing and being creative in a, in a, different, in a different world. I mean, I got, I got the creative inventiveness from my dad. So I know that he didn't trust people. And Really and truly, his invention, if he'd, if he'd sort of thought, I'll make a range of gardening um, products, there are plenty of outlets that he could have gone to, particularly for the elderly and infirm. There are these magazines that you get through the post, you know, that, that have 101 different inventions and, or useful gadgets and things that I'm sure he could have sold it. But he didn't want to do that because he didn't think he would get any money from it. Um, and I think his experience on inventions and advertising had uh, put him off uh, dealing with other companies. So he was going round to the local um, garden centres himself and he would just turn up and say, look, I've invented this. And it was a very professional looking piece of apparatus, as he would call it. Um, but they would say, well, you know, how many have you got? And, and, and it was like going to a bookshop, I suppose, and saying, I'm an author and here's my book. Do you mind having five books? And if you sell any, you can have them on sale and return and I'll make the money. And of course, you know, the, the, the price that he 
would make them himself manually or put them out piecemeal to somebody else to make. He would never, it, it became so expensive that without mass production, he couldn't compete. And of course he didn't. And when we were clearing out his house after he died, there were loads of these lengths of green tubing, these paddles and unassembled units that he'd had a minimum order of, I don't know, 100 or 200 of these units. He thought that over the years he could, he could sell. And, um, and sadly, he didn't. And he got very disillusioned and, and he got older, of course. And then, unfortunately for him, dementia hit him. And what started off as a very, well, I say started off, but what was a very clever and thoughtful, inventive man became uh, this sad old chap who no longer knew who I was, who the sister was. And, and of course, he died in a very horrible way in a care home. And I, I just feel so bad for my dad, who went down one, one area and had no idea how to promote these very clever things. He ran his business doing the aerials. He was happy doing that, but it was really after that he got very frustrated because he, he had all these ideas. And in a way, I know that feeling. I've got lots of ideas for programs, for videos, and for the things I would love to do. But it's that whole business about on your own, it's very difficult. And trying to get somebody else to understand your vision, your ideas, is very difficult. I used to pitch stuff for t television stations. Uh, I had ideas for um, lots of children's stuff, but nobody was interested or they didn't see the same vision or kids had moved on or they understand. And it is, it's a very hard and harsh world out there. But I love looking at these inventions, these crazy things, because for me, they just tell me stories. They tell me stories. What would you do with a deep sea diving vessel that's never been invented before? Jules Verne, you know, there you go. And all of this, um, special bridges that move up and down and revolve round, you know, and hot air balloons, dirigible airships and things like this. They're just so interesting and I love them. Anyway, thank you for joining me on my little vlog today. I hope to be back tomorrow with a, another, um, another one, but without this cold. In, in, if you fancy one of the mugs, by the way, um, they're on the baldexplorer.com. Not these, but the ones from the, which have Bald Explorer on them. Anyway, it's at the end. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye bye.